Hi guys, and welcome to Mama Loves Mysteries and Tea. It's Sinister Saturdays, and I'm Laura. This week, let me grab my notes here, we've got cold cases. Oh yeah, um, these ones again are out of Pennsylvania, but I decided that if you have cold cases in your area that didn't make national news and you think maybe should be put out there or interesting, by all means, comment below with them and I will do the research and put them up. But for now, let's get started. Um, we're going to start off with Maurice and Chivarelli. Mrs. Chivarelli went missing March 18th, 1964. Um, she left her home, 10 minutes later was seen walking down one of the main streets of town, and then just disappeared. Not forever, but just till later on that day when her murdered body was then found in a mining pit. Um, this mining pit was north of Route 309, um, and it was also discovered that Mrs. Chivarelli had been physically and sexually abused before her murder. No suspect has ever been found as of yet. However, DNA was collected back in 2007, and a profile of the killer's DNA was put together. No hits came up at that time, but the DNA was there. So, fast forward to 2018, when a program called Snapshot Phonotype was developed. This actually takes the DNA and puts a face to it. It reads the DNA and what it should be and creates that. So that is where we get these three extremely, extremely creepy pictures of our possible murderer. Um, these are ages from 25, 40, and 60. And again, this guy's, this guy's really creepy looking. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not judgy, but I don't, I think I'd walk through the other side of the street. All right, on to our next one. Sandra Lee Lubert. Um, she left behind a daughter and a husband. So, other than maybe a hard marriage, there really was no reason for her to just disappear. But she did. She was last seen at the Crossing Bar and Grill in Leaksburg, PA. Sandra was never seen again after that. Until her skull was found in Dutch Fork Creek in Donegal Township in January 28, 1998. The rest of her body was found further upstream. No one's ever been charged and uh, they have no idea who killed her. Our next one here, I'm going to be very honest, is terrifying. Not how the person died so much, but, well, you'll see. We have an unknown Vic and an unknown suspect in this case. November 6, 1980, um, a man was found burned to death um, near Interstate 80 in Wolf Creek, Mercer County, PA. Um, the man was burned so badly that the police didn't even know he was murdered until the coroner came there and, well, found evidence of him being murdered, shot. Other information we got from the coroner was that he was 5'8", um, 115 pounds, and extremely malnourished. I don't know, maybe this man was homeless, who's to say? Because nobody ever came forward to say they knew this man to begin with. He may not even been from Pennsylvania, who knows? Now, the day he was found, he was wearing a blue t-shirt and brown pants, or at least that's what was left of it. Um, on the blue t-shirt on the right-hand side, there was a WE, maybe a WI, or a WP. They never really were quite sure what it was completely, but it definitely had a W in it. Um, yeah, this man has, again, never been identified. But what they did do with what was left of him was reconstruct what he may have looked like. And that's where we get these absolutely terrifying pictures from. But again, I'm being 
mean here because this is a victim and could possibly be somebody's family member. Who knows? Again, um, I don't know if I completely feel maybe he was from Pennsylvania. That's why he wasn't identified right away. Um, a lot of homeless leave to other areas to get away from their families so their family don't see them like that. And uh, who knows? Who knows? But maybe someone knows. On to our last one here. Now our last one is kind of juicy and is not exactly um, unknown. This is a little bit more of a popular case, but it is interesting. So let's go with it. Um, we're going to go with Robert Perger, 49, Hanover Township, PA. He was found December 16th, 1985, shot multiple times along the side of his car. Um, his passenger door was open and it looked very disheveled in there. And from the evidence the police gathered, it looked like he was actually trying to run away from whomever was coming into his car. But it's hard for me to completely feel sorry about Mr. Robert, or better known as Bob, because the police also found out, and he'd been known for other things, of stealing weed and selling weed. So right off the bat, he had some enemies. But that's not all. A couple years before he was murdered, he had actually testified in a court against some very bad people and made other enemies. So Bob wasn't real liked and it definitely ended badly for Bob because of his ties with bad people. Um, not saying he deserved to die. Please don't say that. Nobody does. But Bob had definitely put himself um, in a life situation that was not safe at all. But no one's ever been found. No one's come forward. And for um, a lot of years, people were afraid to say anything, which makes it even more scary to me. Uh, if somebody did see something, whoever did this, um, they've got power or pull somewhere just to make everybody be quiet. That's scary all in itself there. All right. That's it for this week, guys. I'm going to stash these notes in the folder for now um i'm sorry this one's so short i actually have been fighting a cold i don't know if you've heard it in my voice as i was talking i'm a little hoarse um but i'm gonna try to squeeze out two next week to make up for this short week here and give you guys some good ones i'd love to touch on some missing people cases i found out that pennsylvania is the 10th largest state for unsolved missing people cases and I am like kind of crushed by that that's awful um I also before we go want to give you guys a number now this number is the 1-800 number for Crime Stoppers of Pennsylvania it is 1-800-472-8477 and they take tips about any cases not just this these ones I presented you today um, and I will always throw this number up when I do these because again, as we all learned as kids from watching Unsolved Mysteries, you may be able to solve a crime, who knows? Um, at least give family closure and time passes and it's, sometimes it's not quite so scary to talk about it anymore either. Um, and that's it guys. I'm, like I said, I'm gonna wrap this up early this week. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and like. Um, again, comment down below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe watch your surroundings, give your family a call, and I will talk to you all later. Bye.